In this video, I'm going to show you a unique root cause analysis technique so that you are able to solve a variety of problems with only six steps. Complex problems in life, in school, in the workplace or anywhere else, it doesn't matter. Furthermore than just analyzing the root cause, I want to show you problem solving techniques you won't find in another video. While explaining the problem solving techniques and the root cause analysis, I will showcase each step with an example. Sounds interesting to you? Then make sure to watch this video until the end. Step 1. I've read multiple books about problem solving. The one thing they all have in common is the first step. Understanding the real problem. A well-defined problem is a problem half solved. What do I mean with understanding the real problem? Imagine the following scenario. One evening, you and your friend are meeting at your house. As he arrives 30 minutes late, the first thing he does in front of you is complaining about the bad parking and traffic situation in your city. You need more parking lots, he says. As he knows about your great root cause analysis and problem solving skills, he asks you how you would solve this problem. What would be your reaction here? Maybe something like, yes, we need more parking lots, maybe an underground car park. But is the real problem really missing parking lots? The first reaction of a good problem solver is not this kind of an answer, it's a question. Simply, why? Why do we need more parking lots? Your friend would probably answer, because the streets are blocked with cars and the roads are too busy. With simply asking why, you identified the real problem. The problem statement of your friend was too narrow. It implied that the problem is that you have missing parking lots in the city and therefore the solution would be simply more parking lots. With a why, we broadened the horizon and brought this problem one level higher. By being too narrow, we exclude a whole bunch of possible root causes. Why should we increase parking lots instead of decreasing the amount of cars in the city? By finding the real problem, we can find the real root cause. Be as broad as possible and as narrow as necessary. Step 2. After understanding the real problem, we are able to classify the problem. Which kind of problem are we facing? We can categorize problems in the following four buckets. Simplistic, deterministic, random, and indeterminate. Simplistic problems are problems with only one answer. They are basically easy to Google, like who is the current president of the United States. Deterministic problems also only have one right answer, but there is a formula involved which needs to be used correctly. For example, what is the area of a square whose side is two feet? Random problems describe problems where multiple answers are possible and all answers are identified. Also not only facts are relevant, judgments plays an important role. For example, deciding between two colleges or two job offers. Indeterminate problems are problems with multiple possible answers and all answers cannot be identified. This problem needs a lot of judgment from the problem solver. For example, how can we increase the profit of a company? In this video, I want to dive deeper into type 4, indeterminate, the most complex problems. Step 3. In this case of these complex problems, the next step is to identify the components and influence factors of the problem. For this we are going to use the logic tree. A logic tree is separating a problem into several parts. The tree starts at the root and when we define it over and over again, we will get to the leaves possible root causes. So how do we identify the components which influence the problem? This happens by divergent thinking. Divergent thinking is a creative process. Here we generate ideas, also bold and chaotic ideas. Don't evaluate your ideas now. Just think and write them down, whatever comes to mind. Let's take the parking lot example. The problem was that the streets are fully packed with cars and there are no free available parking lots. When I try to think divergently, so creative in a broadening sense, in my mind I have the following components within our problem. We have place to park, so parking lots, and on the other side we have vehicles, cars. Let's further refine each branch. Which subcomponents are part of parking lots? What about the size of a parking lot? Or the amount of parking lots? Or also the width of the streets? because cars can also park on the side of a street, just to name a few here. 
and what comes to mind when thinking about vehicles? Maybe the size? Or also the amount of cars? That's good for now. I mean this example is just for demonstration purposes. When we cannot refine a branch even more, or we think it does not make any sense, then we have come to a leaf, a possible root cause. Step 4. Formulate hypotheses and prioritize them. The next step is to build hypotheses around the leaves of our logic tree. A hypothesis is basically an assumption for an argument. We can never show that a hypothesis is true, but we can try to find evidence which is inconsistent with the hypothesis and therefore proves it wrong. We assume a hypothesis is true as long as we don't have evidence which is inconsistent with a certain hypothesis. Based on the leaves in the logic tree, we could formulate the following hypotheses. An example, hypothesis 1. The amount of vehicles in this city increased in the last 12 months over 10%. Now you can imagine we can formulate a hypothesis for every potential root cause, even multiple hypotheses for a single root cause. We can also prioritize hypotheses over another, because the probability for each might be completely different and maybe one makes more sense than another. As per the Pareto or 80-20 principle, 20% of the possible root causes will lead to 80% of the symptoms. Step 5. Now gather data and evidences which might be relevant for each hypothesis. Data gathering could be asking people around you, looking up for available data in the internet, which might have a valuable information for your case. Start with the high priority hypothesis first. For this, we will use a hypothesis evidence matrix. Evidences in the first column and in the other columns, we enter our hypothesis. Based on this matrix, we want to find the hypothesis which is the least inconsistent with all the evidence. Every single time we gather new evidence, we will enter a new row and compare if any hypothesis is inconsistent with this evidence, meaning that the hypothesis might be wrong. When our evidence shows that the identified root cause has an immense effect, we made huge progress in our root cause analysis. Let's assume we found data that shows that in the last 12 months, many new vehicles were registered in the city. Maybe because new jobs were created, or there was another event which triggered an immigration into the city. Step 6. Identify action items and an action plan on what needs to be done in order to tweak around the root cause so the overall problem gets resolved. We assume that the amount of vehicles increased dramatically and therefore we have an issue with free parking lots in the city. Now it's time to propose a solution. The hardest part is always actually finding the root cause, not the solution. What could be a potential solution here? How can we decrease the amount of cars? Hmm, what about taxes or other monetary policies to make a car less attractive? Or investing into the infrastructure so public transport or roads explicitly for bikes to make the city also more green. It's up to you here. After identifying your solution, create an action plan. Which tasks do we have to tackle in order to come closer to our goal and therefore for solving our problem? Write down what needs to be done by when and also who is taking responsibility here. That's how you come closer to your goal. That's a potential way of root cause analysis and on how to solve a problem. Do you want to know how to make better decisions? For example, deciding between multiple solutions? Or do you want more case studies for real world problems? Other sophisticated problem solving techniques or root cause analysis approaches? Let me know in the comment section below. Also consider liking and subscribing if you don't want to miss out more of this content. Thanks for watching and take care.